Yeah, thanks a lot. My name is Patrick, and I'm from European University Bochum in Germany. And today I present a new hostel for you as a novel tool to receive alerts in real time on your mobile devices. And since we have those really interesting gamma reverse this week last Sunday, I have changed my slide over the last days and introduced an example for this gamma reverse report of the site. And we are a team of developers working on that, and you can find our paper um, shown here in the title slide. First of all, I would like to uh, um, review something you've learned over the week, and most of you have known it already. In order to really understand trends and events, MR reverse, EGN players, and so on, we have to monitor them with observatories that cover different particles, particle types, and particle energies. And then one of these monitoring observatories, like Fermi, detects a transient in the sky, they will issue an alert and um, then send that to the community using GCI. But there are other communities using different alert screens, such as Sample, Among, and so on. And the uh, follow up observatories need automatic pipelines in order to uh, uh, yeah, put, um, conduct automatic follow up observations. The uh, current issue is somehow related to these many different alert brokers, is that the uh, format that is used to uh, distribute alerts may differ between the different platforms and pipelines. We can see that, for example, in Angels that are completely uh, human written up and compared that to TCM notices that are uh, automatic generated and intended to be read by uh, yeah, computers. So that's what we did. We uh, tried to listen to all of these trees, collect information from other websites about these events, and compare these new alerts with transient data that we have in our database. And then we uh, sent some interesting event. This event is a push notification in real time to users of AstroPolyPay. So you can get AstroPolyPay as a free app from the Google Play Store and the iOS Play Store. And as soon as you get push notification on your device, you can then open up the app simply and uh, perform code searches around the event to see if there are no sources that are active at the moment, for example. We can see the visibility of certain observatories to see if you may observe that event in uh, the next slide. And to get further event information about our PDF that will guide you to other websites like Baba, which they were just a few months ago. And these links are customized, so they will point you directly to the correct application site. I would like to show you how that worked for the Gamma Ray Burst on the Sunday. So it started uh, the afternoon on Sunday with the Mistook Gamma Ray Burst alert. And you see here the HTN notes, and we deduce automatic the uh, location of that Gamma Ray Burst. And send a real time notification to our users. Um, then a few minutes later, the XRT notice arrived. We again deduced all the relevant information on that field and pushed that information in real time to our users. And the same happened for the Fermi Gamma Ray first order that appeared a little later in the video. This time it's on GTM Circular. So it's a little bit more complex to deduce all the relevant information from that because it's a human generator. But we uh, managed at the moment to deduce the position because it's from an easy and in the future we will also get further information from that using machine learning. The uh, next uh, alert arrived almost one hour later, which was certainly not alert, also a GCM circular with slightly different standard. And when you would have looked at astrophotography at that time, so late summer evening, you would have seen uh, in the interface the app something like that, where you see, uh, uh, first of all, color coded in green the Fermi uh, localization, in orange the uh, localization, and then in gray and red known sources from the uh, Fermi catalog. And if you see when you zoom in that there's no source there, and you see that these different alerts um, coincide with the Earth's surface circle, 
uh, reported in the notices. And you see that there's a lot of actually uh, immediately that those two come together. And this was uh, also written in the GCN and circuits. After that, we uh, have a uh, Fermi uh, GDN notice. So typically these notices arrive first, but this time there was a delay of several hours. And when you look at the statistics of, of these alerts, you typically expect the uh, GDN alerts to arrive in uh, yeah, several years since uh, 2016. So the process is rather automatic, but in that a uh, special case, there was an online problem with your automated pipeline, therefore, this uh, alert was a little bit late. But typically, I, I may also add here is that typically you get the uh, Fermi notice first, mostly flight position, and then uh, after several minutes, you get the final uh, position of Fermi. But in this case, it was different, and then the end, we even got a very large uh, refined analysis. That was one day later, so one day afternoon, and then you got the final uh, information uh, for the internet. If you uh, now open up the QDP or at any time after uh, the alerts, the interface and the app looks like that. So you can, as explained, perform full searches. So that's the uh, second screen from left. Here you see the alerts. With respect to other known transients and uh, catalog sources. In the next image, I showed you when you go one tab to the right in the app, you see the visibility at your favorite observatory, and you can change that. So, yeah, you support many different observatories at the moment and also custom location. And on the last tab, you see uh, many uh, dedicated websites like Alabin, ASA Sky, but also many Fermi related websites like Fava. Um, and then you have decided to see all the GCNs. It looks like that when you click on that thing, listing all of these uh, GCNs. And Sylvia so gave a nice overview of some of them in her talk a few days ago. And I think it still uh, increases with uh, new uh, alerts uh, yeah, every day about that event. The other thing is that we plan, especially for our gamma ray bursts, to include in the interface the option to see the current gamma ray bursts with respect to previous gamma ray bursts. And here, in that example, with that gamma ray bursts from Sunday, you see that it's extremely powerful. And that was developed in the Asakuli workshop that happened in the end of October in the soon part of the uh, yeah, as the PDP version that we will then update in the next few months. But we can't do just memory bursts. We uh, actually support, and you know, I look at the interface of the website, there are actually transients that we uh, govern since uh, 2022 in April. You see that the map is pretty true here, so that's the location of all of the transients that are up here. And color coded, you see in uh, yellow optical transients, in, uh, um, in uh, green, it was Fermi, orange, split, and there are black as you between others. You see on um, this timeline here the events in historical, uh, so as they arrive, so the timeline of the events, and on the left, you see the events listed in uh, chronological order. Then you can see all the details that I want to try out on the website. It's just astronomicalpolitik.com. Then you can see it much better than here in the viewer. The uh, bright part is dedicated to visibility plots and soon also like for generators that mention the light curve. Then the uh, section here is dedicated for the customers links to other websites, such as uh, and website GCNs and the uh, original GC servers for the events. The idea of security, however, originally uh, came by this Ice Cube event in 2017 in September. There it took several days to find the correlation between uh, the Texas 0506 source and the Ice Cube other. And with Asukuriti, you can easily, whenever you get a machine other, See it on your mobile device, perform a chrome search, and see all your device sources. 
And then you can click as a mentioned before in the info section to check the power light curve and see if the sort of there. And it was also useful a couple of weeks ago, almost five years after the first ice cube we came uh, on the left side. We have an additional one here in the center of the screenshot where you see that the Texas source is still in the uh, error of the neutrino event. And you could easily see in the guitar at the time that the source was not active. That's also what the very good work about. There are other apps, especially for IceCube, like the local Amazon app and the IceCube augmented reality app. They also uh, send you push notification, and here you see a uh, install all of them, and also put it into the browser path, and updates you at uh, some point with information about the event. And um, that's the basically last slide here, where I would like to show you an overview of the architecture that we use. If you want to see details, you should go to our paper, you can reach by all the details. I'd also like to uh, mention that it's a modular architecture. And our central API, that's in Python, who runs in the cloud computer in Europe, um, that's open up uh, so that you can access it, the HTTP request, and also our one of them is so the address app, the Android app, so that's the website, are available to users. You just download them in the app store, so it will go to our website. And I would also like to thank you because I just checked the uh, number of users over the last month. The color code that we see here in South Africa, that we uh, got many users, and I assume that most of them are here in that symposium, looking at alerts over the last day for the gamma readers. And if you have some suggestions that you experience, I would like to get your feedback about that. And with that, I would like to thank you and welcome some questions.